and welcome to you news. I'm Carolina Saranza. Happy Thursday, Feliz Jueves, and thank you for being with us today. And we'll begin today with a growing crisis in the Amazon. Fires are raging at a huge rate, 74,000 in Brazil this year alone. These fires posing a devastating threat to the region and to the world. And now turning to immigration, major controversy after the White House announced yesterday that it is trying to enact a rule to allow expanded migrant family detentions and even hold children for longer periods of time, potentially even indefinitely. Juan Carlos Gonzalez has the latest. President Trump said Wednesday that he was looking very seriously at ending the right to citizenship for babies born to non-U.S. citizens on American soil. Trump spoke to reporters as he left the White House for a speech in Kentucky. Let's listen. Implications of those comments from the president is Sam Ehrman. He's a professor at Great War weighing down the economy. This, as a new report is released, highlighting challenges ahead of the 2020 election. Andrea Linares has the details. A new poll was conducted shortly after the mass shootings in Texas and Ohio. And these were the results according to the Associated Press. Just 30. Now back to you. Thank you, Andrea, for that report. And now a bipartisan group of lawmakers wants the Trump administration to spare olive oil from being targeted by potential tariffs on European goods. In a and now to California, a state still recovering from a mass shooting at a food festival last month. Today, a manhunt is underway for a sniper who shot a deputy just north of Los Angeles. Ana Mendoza has more details. Now, next, the president. And I'm Lorraine Cáceres in front of Miami Dade Court, where Mexican actor Pablo Lyle is asking a judge to dismiss the charges against him of manslaughter. This is You News. We'll be right back. And welcome back to You News. A decisive day in a Miami court for Mexican actor Pablo Lyle. He's accused of manslaughter for punching and killing a driver a couple of months ago. The actor is trying to convince the judge that he acted in self-defense. Lorraine Casares is outside the court with the ladies. Lorraine. Carolina, this is a very important hearing for Pablo Lyle because it basically means that if the law isn't on his side, we could possibly not have a trial in this case. As you were mentioning, his lawyers are trying to convince this judge to dismiss the charge of manslaughter that is against their client right now, trying to uh, suggest that this is a classic case of stand your ground, which means that a person has the right to defend their life or their territory if they think that they are in danger. And that's the thing that they've been saying since the first day of this case saying that Pablo Lyle acted in self-defense just a few minutes ago. We were able to see the tape playback of the interrogation when Pablo Lyle was first interrogated by detectives after this incident took place. And since the very beginning, he's been telling the detectives, I thought my life was in danger. I had screaming kids in the car. There was pure chaos. I thought this man was going back to his car to get a gun, maybe a bat. So I had to, I had to act in self-defense and try to prevent the situation from escalating. We've also heard from detectives that were first on the scene. We've also heard from some witnesses that were there when this all took place. One lady even making a very graphic description of what she saw when Juan Ricardo Hernandez hit the floor. She said he was bleeding from his mouth. He was unconscious immediately. And she knew right then and there that this person was not going to make it out alive out of this incident. Right now, this is a situation that can, you know, go down today, even tomorrow. This might take a few days. So we'll definitely be here watching every development of this case. For now, back to you. Lorraine, and based on the outcome of the hearing, could Pablo Lyle possibly go free as soon as today or this week? That's possible, but it's highly unlikely that it happens today. And this is the reason why, even though this is not a trial, the defense has to present to the judge all the evidence they have to say that this is a stand your ground case. So this is what's happening today. The judge is listening to not only testimony, but analyzing all of the evidence. We know that Pablo Lyle will likely um, possibly address the judge himself. After that happens, the judge can say, OK, I've heard enough. And this is definitely a classic case of uh, stand your ground. So he would immediately dismiss the charges. 
and Pablo Lyle would go free. That is unlikely to happen today because it's already, it's been a few hours and they still have a lot of evidence to go through. So this might happen tomorrow or even next week. In case he feels that he didn't hear enough evidence, this will definitely go to trial and he will then make a decision of when this case will be heard. Back to you. Well, thank you, Lorraine, for that live report from Miami-Dade. Now, in New York City, officials have announced a new plan that could help thousands of renters in that city. As Fabiola Galindo explains, undocumented immigrants are also expected to get a helping hand thanks to a new rule. Those who oppose including undocumented immigrants to the lottery list, they argue that doing so will shorten the chances of those documented to get a chance at one of these affordable housing units. Today, candidate Bernie Sanders is releasing a more than $16 trillion climate plan. It calls to the state are investigating whether two fires set about 30 hours apart are connected. One victim was a taco truck owner who just installed new equipment in his food truck. Grecia Lastran has a story. Terrifying moments in a New York diner when a woman realized her little girl was choking. Luckily, someone stepped and saved her, thanks to what he learned from his own daughter. Rafael Rodriguez has the story of a diner owner turned into a hero. Guatemala, where a violent prison riot has shocked the nation. This, after a separate prison incident that left seven inmates dead several months ago. Michel Jurado reports. A mosquito-borne illness is hitting Latin America hard. More than 2 million people in the region have contracted dengue fever. Giselle Robles takes a look at how some countries are trying to fight the potentially deadly illness. Some trouble for the newly released Apple Card, but first, a warning for those who signed up for MoviePass. Annabelle Sedano has all the details in today's tech report. Annabelle. Hi there, and we begin with this. Movie pass holders, you may want to listen up. Forget about putting it in your wallet. I'm Annabelle Sedano, and that was your daily dose of tech news. Have a good one, guys. And welcome back to you, news fans. Raised their voices, sent out tweets, and got one of their favorite shows back. One Day at a Time will be premiering sometime next year after being picked up by Pop TV. But now the question is, what is going to change? Miriam Arias has the latest details and also got to sit down with one of the stars from the show. But Jane the Virgin ended this year after five successful seasons and 100 episodes. Now, it was among the first shows in recent years to be led by a largely Latino cast, so that was really nice to see. Now, uh, Gina Rodriguez, the star, even got her first Emmy from it. Um, you know, now One Day at a Time was praised by fans just as much as the show Jane the Virgin, and it was thanks to them, the fans, that the show actually came back. <laughs> they always win. I'm so glad when that happens. And this show became such a trend. Even celebrities like Lee Manuel Miranda advocating for its return. I'm curious to know how exactly did the show come back? So it's really the show features very unique storylines. We see immigration take center stage, but also talks about other topics like veteran issues and also mental health. Yeah, it covers a wide variety of topics, which is also why fans really wanted to bring it back because, again, all types of people felt represented by this. We have Elena, which is the girl that I was able to talk to. She was great. Uh, she plays an LGBTQ member, a member of the community, and, you know, she has to deal with coming out to her family, things that are very hard at times for a girl that's 15 years old. Right. She also, it's also about Latino issues, so we ask if we get to see fun things like a quinceañera. You know, her grandma, played by Lidia Moreno, uh, Rita Moreno, she, she, her name is Lidia, uh, she really wants her to have a quinceañera, but, you know, she doesn't really want to have one because she's maybe growing up in a different environment and doesn't want to do that. We're so used to those telenovelas <laughs> in Spanish, and it's so great to see the same storylines, but then in another language, in English. Exactly. But now, Caro, I do want to talk to you about another show that's got quite a following. Have you seen Stranger Things? I was able to see until the second season, then I had a baby and I had to stop <laughs> watching Netflix for a while. Totally understandable, and of course you can start binging it whenever you're ready. <laughs> now, I want to tell you that the Netflix hit series is... Oh, it is. I'm going to have to watch the third season, and I'll let you know if I'm going to travel to that cafe and taste it. We'll go together and see how they are together. <laughs> well, Medium, thank you for being here with us today, and we'll see you guys tomorrow, Friday, finally. Hasta mañana.